Awesome. Well, good morning, everybody. We're excited that you can be with us. I'm going to give just a few moments here to uh, allow everybody to kind of catch up with us here for a second. I want to pull it up on my monitor and uh, see where we're at. Praise God. 1101. All righty, let's see here. Hey, there we are. Alrighty, well let's get some thumbs up for some audio. I've got mine turned down here, but I should be able to see you as you come on. We have a few people on. We'll uh, give a few minutes. Here we go. We've got a couple more. Praise God. Welcome to Western Harvest. We're excited you're with us this morning. Um, those of you that are on, maybe you can give us a little indication that you can hear me. The audio is good. So let me know. There we go. Alright, a couple thumbs up. Let's see here. Praise God. Okay. Now let's see here. Excited that you're with us this morning. We're just going to give a few more minutes as we get some people on here. We've got a couple of you on. It's exciting times that we live in. A great day to be alive. Getting hot here in Texas. And uh, we're going to have a great time in the Word together this morning. So we'll get started here in just a moment. Glad that you were here. We go. Lots of people. Aren't we excited about the technology? That's exciting. Well, I appreciate it. I guess that camera, you comfortable with that? My wife Angel is helping me with that. And uh, we're going to get started here just momentarily as we get ready to go. Praise God. Well, we are so blessed that you were with us today in the reading of God's Word and studying God's Word. I'm not real sure where <clears throat> you're watching from this morning. Uh, we know that uh, parts of our country are able to go to church. A lot of our uh, feedback have been from folks that are still uh, not able to go or at, at least a reduced number. So we're excited. Hey, we, we were just like you. We were traveling and ministering and all of a sudden, uh, you know, we were set at home here at our ranch and uh, we wanted to continue to uh, speak into the lives of young people across the nation and partners and friends. And, and uh, we're just so excited. Um, that we can uh, use technology, use the internet, and uh, to come into your homes and to be with you this morning. So if you're with us this morning, we are very uh, grateful that you have chosen to study God's Word. Man, I don't know how many weeks this has been going on, 10 weeks or whatever it's been, but um, it's been exciting to see some of the messages that have come forth. I know this morning's message will really bless us. And remember, as a, as a teacher, I, I try my very best to be current and also to have application and, uh, and to use scriptures to, to, to back up what we're talking about. And so as we study God's Word, I think it's very important that we just don't have a lot of uh, self-opinions and uh, ideas that may work or what we think about what's going on. Let's go to the Word of God and allow Him to develop our mindsets, our belief systems, and uh, the promises and principles of His Word. So uh, I pray that you enjoy uh, this kind of teaching and that it's rooted and grounded in the Word. So hey, we've got a lot of people on this morning. We want to get started. We're just a few minutes after 11 o'clock. Uh, let me just start by saying I'm Scott Mendes. I'm the Executive Director of Western Harvest Ministries. Uh, again, we are an outreach ministry. We have 15 acres here in Weatherford, Texas. Uh, we have full-size rodeo arena. Uh, we've done some camps here at home, but the last few years God has really used us as rodeo chaplains, my family and I. Um, out on the road and so as you can imagine with the rodeos in different states not being able to um, go forth uh, we've been here and that's why we're coming to you so hey if you want to know about myself and some of the guys I speak with go to usayo.org my ministry partners man we've got guys from the NFL the NBA dear friends of mine and we love speaking the Word of God where the Lord will have us so check that out again this is Western Harvest and uh, we, we conduct uh, rodeo Bible camps and bull riding schools and all that. We're excited. Hey, if we're going to be here much longer, we're going to start doing some clinics right here in Weatherford. We're just trying to be real sensitive uh, to how God would want to do those. We're really not structured as a church or incorporated that way. So we need a lot of volunteers and partners whenever we uh, provide the opportunity to reach out. And we love putting on concerts, bull ridings, team ropings, ranch rodeos. 
uh, or all the above. So uh, that's kind of what we do. This morning, I really am excited about what God's speaking. Last week's message, exposing the enemy, uh, has just been uh, something that still resonates on my heart. But today, what I bring to you, I want uh, I want you to really be blessed and minister to by it. Before we start any service, we like to pray. And so having said that, I want to take this opportunity to pray over this morning's service with you. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Father, you are the creator of universe, of the universe and of the heavens, and you framed the worlds, Lord, by your words. You speak love. You speak hope over your children. And Father, as we study your word this morning, I ask that you would help us to apply it to our life. And Lord, we, we just come against the spirit that's over our country right now. And Lord, we recognize it and we push back against it, but we do it for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, Lord. We do it from praying and uniting and walking in love and unity, Father, the way you design that, Lord. Not under any man-made umbrella, but your love. And so I thank you this morning as we study, Lord. It will change us from the inside out. And Lord, that you, our desire is that you be lifted up, that you be glorified. And Father, by doing so, your word says that you will draw all men unto yourself if we will exalt you. So Father, that's our heart, is to exalt you through your word and through the unity of our partners and our friends that are watching this. Lord, use this broadcast. Use this time together for your glory. And we give you all the praise. We stand against anything that would try to come against your children from being able to receive and break the chains of bondage in their life, Lord God. We thank you for that. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm really excited to to uh, be coming to you this morning. And, uh, man, I'm coming to you from my office here in Weatherford. It's getting really hot out there. I went out and fed this morning, and uh, you can't help but get a little bit of sweat behind you as you're out there feeding the livestock early in the morning. Well, uh, wherever you're watching, again this morning, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and being with us um, for what we're going to talk about this morning. I just want to do a little recap. Um, you know, again, last week we talked about uh, exposing the enemy. We've talked about courage. We've talked about where to turn in the time of needs and trying to be relative with some of these messages and the scriptures that we want to speak on. A lot of times I'll use a short story to come to you. Uh, just to open up, it's usually read from my grandfather's devotion. This morning I have a passage of scripture that I want to read in its entirety. It's about 15 or 20 verses, and I'll do my very best to read it slow and precise for you. But in reading this passage, we're going to talk today about rebellion. And when we have rebellion or a rebellious spirit, what happens is it leads to a ruin. And, and, and this passage of scriptures, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me, please turn to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Now I've read this in my New King James that I teach out of, but I printed this off this morning uh, in the New Living Translation. I, I love it. It's a little bit softer and uh, it just it helps to read a little bit smoother. So again, 1 Samuel chapter 15, we're going to read the first 20 verses and then I want to pull some things out that's from this story in God's Word. And I believe that it's very relative that we understand that a rebellious spirit isn't um, a teenager, it isn't an individual, it could be a spirit that is coming against our country, against our government, and against the morals and the values and the beliefs that we have as Christians. To be Christ-like, to be conformed into the image of the Son. That is what we are called to do. That is how we worship and honor God is when we break our free will and we seek his plan for our life. And so I love this message this morning. Rebellion leads to ruins. I think you'll be very blessed by it. Again, I'm going to be reading 1 Samuel 15, the first 20 chap uh, verses um, out of the New Living Translation. So with that, let me begin, follow along, and uh, let's get into the word today. Amen. First, uh, ver the first verse in 15 says, One day Samuel said to Saul, It was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people, Israel, to listen to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven's army has declared. 
I have decided to settle the accounts with the nation of uh, Amalek for opposing Israel when they came out of Egypt. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekites nation, both men, women, children, baby, cattle, sheep, goats, uh, and, and also donkeys. So uh, verse 4, so Saul mobilized his armies at Tel Am. Uh, there were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 men from Judea. Then Saul and his army went to the town of, Amakite, a town of the Amakites and laid in wait in the valley. Saul sent his sent this warning uh, sent sent this warning uh, warning to the Kenite, Kenites. Move away from where the Amakites live, or you will die with them. For you, for you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up out of, out of Egypt. So the Canaanites picked up and left. Verse seven. Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites and the Havites and all the way to Sir, east of Egypt. He captured Ag Agai, the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everybody else. So Saul and his men spared Agai's life and kept the best of the sheep, the goats and the cattle and the fattened calves and the lambs. Everything, in fact, that he that appealed to them, they destroyed only what was wor uh, what was worthless or of poor quality. Then, then the Lord said to Samuel, "I am sorry that I ever made Saul king, for." He has not been loyal to me, and he has refused to obey my command. Saul was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night long. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him, Saul went to the town of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Then he went to Gilgal. When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's command. Uh, then, what is, then what is all the bleeding of sheep and goats and the lowering of the cattle I hear, Samuel demanded. It, it, is it, it's true that the army spared the best and the sheep, the goat, the best of the sheep, the goat, and the cattle, Saul admitted. But then, uh, but they are going to sacrifice them to your God. We have destroyed everything else. Then Samuel said to Saul, Stop. Listen to what the Lord told me last night. What did he tell you? Saul asked. And Samuel told him, Although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader of the tribe of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, Go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they are all dead. They have, they haven't. Uh, why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush from the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? But I did obey the Lord. Saul insisted. I carried out his mission. He gave me. I brought back King Agai, but I destroyed everyone else. The, the, then, the, then my troops brought in the best of the sheep, the goat, and the cattle, and, the, and, and to plunder and to sacrifice them to the Lord at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices, or your obedience to his voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offering the offering of fat of rams. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. Because you have rejected the commandments of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Verse 24, and we're just about done. Then Saul admitted to Samuel, Yes, I have sinned. I have destroyed your, disobeyed your instructions, and the Lord commanded, for I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. But now, please forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel replied, I will not go with you uh, since you have rejected the Lord's command. He has rejected you as king of Israel. <clears throat> 
And Samuel turned <clears throat> to go. Saul, excuse me, Saul tried to hold him back and tore the hem of his robe. <clears throat> and Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to someone else who was better than you and who is uh, in the glory of Israel will not lie nor will change his mind for he is not human that he should change his mind man I know and I thank you for sticking with me on the reading of that those first 25 verses or so are powerful God sent Samuel to uh, to anoint and to speak to, to Saul and, and God gave Saul commands and instructions of what to do in the times that they lived in. And I want to say in this message today, I believe that God is speaking to you and I in the difficult circumstances that we live in in our world today. And we have a free will, and so we can choose the way of God or we can choose the way of the world. If you see at the end of this passage, we see that, that Saul thought that he was doing right by preserving the resources and not totally instructing his, his soldiers and leaders to destroy everything. You see, God's got a plan. He knows what's best for you and I. He loves us. His plans are not always harmful, and His plans are boundaries. And so when God instructs us to do something, He allows us in, in His love for us to choose the better, the higher life. And in order to choose that higher life, we must let go of the things that, that hold us back, that hinder us, that have been spoken into our life, that are putting us into chain, uh, chains and shackles and bondages and tripping us up from serving God with an openness and with a humility. So my question is, is God has our best interests in mind? You must believe that. When God instructs us, we follow that to a T point upon point, precinct upon precinct. God does everything in His Word decently fitted and joined together. He's got pastors, He's got evangelists, He's got teachers, He's got servants. And when we do our part, we work together in harmony. But when the enemy comes in and he tries to put more of a good thing on you, he begins to trap us down and we get out of sync with God's plan in our life. So God has our very best interest in mind. His commands are for our benefit. They keep us from they keep us so that we they don't keep us from enjoying our life. They help us to enjoy our life. But disobeying the Lord makes our life more difficult and more complicated. Disobeying is a choice. Obeying is a choice. What should we obey? Lord God, when you cry out in the midst of your adversities, what shall I do? What can I do? What do you want me to do? It always comes back to the word. The Word of God is the Lord Himself right there in your hands as you read it, as you submit to it, as you are willing to apply what it says to your life, it and you will do the changes. But I want to say this, and this came to my heart, it's not in my notes, but I'm reminded where the Word of God says that the tradition of man nullify the effects and the power of God. That is religion. We go to church and we think that we're fine. We hear the word, we read the word, but the word doesn't speak to us. That's a relationship. Thousands upon thousands are sitting in churches today. They're hearing the word of God. They think that they're fine because they're in the environment of where God is, but that's not the case. Their hearts and the, the hardness of their heart, the rebellious spirit that they have, the lack of obedience closes the door of their heart. And God says, I want that door open. In fact, he says that I will knock on your heart. That me and the Father, God the Father and Jesus the Son, want to come into your heart. Once they're in there, I believe they they lose the Holy Spirit of our life to teach us to walk in the power of the Spirit. That doesn't mean we turn into Casper the friendly ghost and we walk around when the Word says that we're to walk in the Spirit. No. It means that we have a mind that's meditated on the Word, set on the things above and not on the things of the earth that we hear Him, that He can guide us. When we're all caught up in self, we can't hear Him. And we become very rebellious. Only when we are submitted to Him can we assure the full measure of His blessing. Amen? So all of this that I read in 1 Samuel, we see very clearly that God wants to do something in, in, in His covenant with you. I believe that God wants to do something with America. And I believe the very things that we see on these streets are an identification 
of the wickedness of who's funding that and who's behind those spirits that are pushing these alternative things that are destroying our beliefs, the history of what we are. Now, I'm not talking about nobody, no pastor would be for racism. No pastor would be for, uh, you know, bad things in life. But the good things and the things that we've come from, there's things that we've had to fight for. We see that God is a God of war, but he does that in such a way that it, 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 it benefits, it blesses his agendas in our life. We are to raise our children with the history of who we are as, as Judeo-Christians, as believers in Christ, so that they too can hang their hats on what they believe. So I want to talk to you today. When we're caught, we're believing in a rebellious spirit. It will lead to ruins. It has to. What is the nature of rebellion? Rebellion is the act uh, against the established order or author authority. It can be the defiance of God's will or the resistance of leadership that he has ordained. See, there's good uh, governments, there's bad governments, there's things that he's ordained, there's things that he has not ordained. He wants us to truly fight for what we believe in. Right now, we need to be standing up for the family. We need to be standing up for the innocence of, uh, of, of innocent blood being shed. We need to stand up for the morals and the values and the constitution that God has given us, that he has ordained. If we will do that, we will be blessed. So find out what God has ordained and be in the midst in that. When we resist what he is doing, uh, doing things our way, we reveal the pride and the selfishness in our own heart when we walk with that rebellious spirit. Amen. And it will lead to where? Ruins. Your life will be lack. Your life will be in poverty. Your, li your life will be uh, just in, in, in shambles. And we don't want that. So that's the definition is when we act against the established authority of what God has ordained. Find out who you are in Christ. When you fall in love with him, not religion, not going to church, but when you know Jesus, Jesus will change you. We can't do that. The ministry, the churches, nobody can. You allowing Jesus into your heart, that's where change begins. But I promise you it never happens until we are broken. So if you think you're broken, but you're not all the way broken to the point of allowing Jesus to, to lead and guide your life, then you're not truly broken. Become broken today and surrender to the Lord. Amen. Here's a biblical example. We see all in the story that we just read. Saul, the first king of Israel, paid a price for his rebellion against God. The Lord wanted to punish the, na the, the nation of Amalek. So uh, how, how they did that was they treated the Israelites. And so he commanded Saul to destroy the nation completely, putting to death the just uh, not just their armies, but all of their people and all their am uh, animals as well. What did he do? He says, I'm going to keep back those that I think are of value and disobey God because God said, wipe them all out. I'm judging them all. I'm going to wipe them all out. And Saul took it into his own authority to say, but wait a minute. Let's kill those that are not so pretty and they have problems. We're going to separate them. But these over here and the king, let's take them back over here. And that's defiance. That's a rebellious spirit that was showing his pride. He didn't listen to the Lord. Have you and I ever not listened to the Lord? We were all teenagers. We were all lost. We were all separated. But we have been grafted into the family of God in our life. Amen. So Saul spared the king and the best of the livestock. That is not, as we read the word this morning, that is not what God commissioned him to do. We must find out what God's will is for our life. God's will is that we seek him, that we worship him, that we give him all of our heart. He is a jealous God. He'll have no other gods before us. But he does not change our hearts. We come to him, open our hearts, and he comes in. So let's talk about this. God's view of rebellion. Man, I, I love studying this because as I study God's word, I see, I see my past. God's word has been said that it's like a mirror. When you look into that, you can see the reflection of who you were before coming to Christ. But you see, God sees Jesus. God sees that blood at Calvary. He sees us, sees us now cleansed and forgiven our sins as far as from the east and the west. We have been redeemed. That's what God sees. But through the, through, through the lack of renewing our minds, we see what we've done in the past. We feel unworthy. And sin causes a, a blanket of shame on our life. 
And so we run from God like Adam and Eve. But God knows where you are. He knows that you're watching this show today. He knows that you've contemplated bad things or done wrong things and trying to cover them up and trying to say, but I, I followed God some of the way. No, God wants us to follow him all of the way. Why? For the benefit of knowing the fullness of his plans for our life and his blessings. God wants to bless us that we may be a blessing to others. So let's look at some of God's view, uh, views of rebellion. Disobeying God is as serious as idolatry and witchcraft. Do you remember when we went back and we were reading verse 23 said this, 1 Samuel 15 verse 23 says this, rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has also rejected you as king. See, he's talking to a king over the situation over a nation, but could he be talking to our leadership and our government today? Absolutely. Could he be talking to me as the head of my household? Could he be talking to you about leading your employees at work so that you may be a God-fearing company in the society that we live in, operating in principles that show blessing and showing fruit that we may give to those that are in lack and in need? Absolutely. Never take God's scripture just to, to twist it or at its first, uh, as it comes to you. Internalize it. Meditate it. Do you believe that today that there is a spirit of witchcraft? Do you believe that there's a spirit of idolatry, worshiping sports, worshiping Hollywood, worshiping entertainers, all the above? Absolutely. Have we all desired to be those things by, by gaining things of the world that's going to change us on the inside? Certainly we have. But as we come into the relationship with Jesus, he begins to show us that's farthest from the truth. God wants to change us from the inside. So disobeying God is as serious as idolatry and witchcraft. Now I've got to move on a little quicker, but rebellion isn't limited to disregarding the Lord's specific command to us. It includes transgressions and moral guidelines to his word. So it's not limited to certain things. It has a broad spectrum. And sometimes it's just an attitude of the heart. There is a spirit of rebellion. There is a rebellious spirit. Identify those. Study to show yourself approved a workman that rightly divide the word of truth so that you may understand and overcome and press back on these spirits that are trying to take over us, our family, over our country. I must move on. So they, they're designed to protect us uh, in our life and the Lord gives us specific commands. Ask the Lord. He will never withhold good things from you. He will show you exactly uh, what he wants to do in our life. Amen. God has ordained two primary types of authorities in our life. His ultimate authority. Matthew 28 and verse 18 reads this. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given you all authority both in heaven and on, in, uh, on earth. Jesus said that to his followers. That is you and I. That is a person that, that is going to rule and reign over his family, over his kingdom, his influence, his community, his country. How do we do that? We do that in humility. We do that by prayer. We do that by knowing the fight that we're in. I'm telling you, we are in a fight for your soul. And that is what we call conquering the beast. Identify that. I've had a rebellious spirit. Have you? Have, have, have you overcome the, the things that are coming against our nation currently in the moment that we're against? How are we going to retaliate? How are we going to stand up? Or are we going to just sit down and take whatever happens in the by and by? I don't know, but I know that God's family needs to stand up to be effective. Amen? So he has authorities. He's given it to leaders. He's given it to pastors. He's given it to coaches. He's given it to people that can disciple and mentor you in your life. When you're having a hard time, seek help. Go that extra mile to say, help me, I need help. And the first one that we call out to is God. Maybe he sounds a little silent in the years and the situations that you're going through, but next thing you know, your phone rings or you're out and you're doing something and somebody speaks life into you. Don't reject that in the hardness of our heart. Open that up, verify it in the word of God and say, yes, I believe you, Lord get into the fellowship and the unity of the family of God and fix those things that are going on in your life. 
You see, do we rebel against God? Here are some ways that we rebel against God. We, review, we refuse to obey His calling. Each one of us, I and mean, anybody watching this broadcast today, you have the call of God on your life. The question is, will you answer that call? Will you begin to develop and discern what your gifts are, what your talents? God never placed you in the game called life without the ability to have the resources that you need to be victorious. Find out what those are. You have gifts. God loves you. Your life is not meaningless. Your life isn't just to float downstream with a bunch of dead fish. No, you're, you're a strong person and you're going to go the way of God. And you can do it in Christ Jesus. Pursuing what He forbids. You see, when we, do, when we violate the commandments of the Scriptures, we are in rebellion. When we violate God's Word is the ultimate authority in our life. It's not just a storybook that we read before bed. It's not just that we pray over our food, that we're good Christians. We renew our minds. We renew our hearts. It has the ability to steer us and to channel us where we want to go. So pursue, uh, pursuing what He provides, uh, per, per, uh, forbids when we violate His commands, we are in rebellion. For, uh, for instance, the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not, you know, uh, look at a woman lustfully and all those type of things. When we do that, we violate God's word. We are in rebellion and we resist and are bucking the ways of God. Pursuing the right things but in the wrong way. I love this because as I pulled this point out of that passage, I realized I knew that God wanted me to win the world championship. That was great. That was his will, but I was going about it wrong. Why? Because the devil told me I had to be a world champion before God could use me. And I was longing for God's acceptance. And I was longing to be used of God. And it closed down my witness. It closed down my influence of being a man of God. And so I would find myself in these bad places that I didn't want to be doing the things I didn't want to be doing. And eventually God would change my heart. And I would realize now that God wanted me to have that relationship. So pursuing right things in the wrong way. Pursuing things out of God's, out of a, a scheduling for God's ways. God's got a perfect timing. When He speaks to you, go now. That's not later, next week, when you get everything organized. You must obey Him in that particular moment and over that situation. Be obedient. Be swift. If you are willing, you will, eat, uh, you will eat the fruit of the land. So pursuing godly goals, but on our own schedule. God's got a time. God has a correct way of pursuing those objectives, specific times. Praying for things that, yes, He wants you to have, but in those times, you're going to have to wait. You're going to wait. You want to be uh, out on your own. You want to be grown up. But it's you have to you have to continue to do the things that, that God knows that you need before you get there. God never places us in leadership until he knows that we're ready for it. Because when we're burdened with too much or we get ahead of God's timing and in his, his ways, that's where the enemy puts too much on us and we're fighting a bigger battle than we should. God wants us to prune off dead things in our life. Dead relationships, uh, dead dreams, uh, uh, dead ambition, dead goals, so that we come out of that, that place of, of, of muck where we're just frustrated and we're saying that God is not for us. He's not speaking to me. He's not doing this for me. I know that He says He'll do this for me, but then we've got to go back and say, Lord, not my will, but Your will be done. And in Your timing, in Your season, eventually You'll have those things. Rest in God. Rest in the faith of God's Word. Amen. The reasons for our rebellion include some things here, and I'm going to hurry for time, but when we doubt the Word of God, have you ever doubted the Word of God? Absolutely. I don't care if you're Billy Graham, uh, myself, or whoever you are in the faith. At times we have doubted God's Word because we didn't see the manifestation of what we were believing for coming right now. In this microwave mentality of this culture that we live in, where we can just Google in whatever we want and it pops up immediately. All this technology, you know, as we can use it is wonderful. But that sometimes doesn't take away from how God wants to speak to us. 
We gotta get over our microwave mentality. We gotta get over putting demand on God. We gotta get over doubting God. Instead of doubting God, let's believe God. Here's another reason why we walk in rebellion is because we have pride. We have arrogance. Arrogant to people demand their own ways. I want it now, Lord. Give it to me. I want it immediately. These are things that we say. These are things that we act. The devil lies to us and says that we should have it right now. And if we don't have it, then there's something wrong with God. That's exactly what he did. Let me read what he when he talked to uh, Genesis 2, verse 17. He's talking to the, uh, to the Adam and Eve. Listen to this. Except the tree... This is Eve telling Satan, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil, uh, it is, if you eat its fruit, you will surely die. See, Satan is all about twisting the word. He's all about releasing these spirits and covering it up with a facade. He loves the makeup. He loves the shield, the, the Mardi Gras where you just have a mask and you don't know what's behind there. If you get caught up into that, it can lead to ruin. Why? Because I'm operating with a rebellious spirit. I've rejected the things of God. I've got ahead of God. I doubt God. I have pride. I have bitterness. I have resentment. Some people rebel against God because they uh, have been unable to let go of the past. You can never go up in Christ until you let go of the past. Paul says, I forget those things which are behind me. I press into the high calling of Christ Jesus. Paul said it. It's in the Word of God. You and I, we need to do that. Whatever has happened to you in your past can be forgiven. But it first has to be submitted. It first has to be confessed. It first has to be laid at the foot of the cross. Jesus, you see my heart. You've seen what's happened to me, God. And when we get over that bitterness and resentment and we reject the things of the past, we can move into the future with Christ Jesus selfishness many people see biblical guidelines as restrictions but no one can live in defiance of God's law and have true peace everybody in this world needs peace our country needs peace right now we cannot fix a spiritual problem with a natural solution and if laws are not upheld constitutions are not upheld then we will fall if our beliefs are not upheld in our heart, we don't draw a line in the sand and say we're not going to go back into our past. We're going to do everything that God commissions us to do in the moving forward. We will stay in the here and now. And I pray that this message this morning breaks every one of our rebellious spirits, pulls us out of our past, sets us into the recognition and the discernment that God loves me, that God called me, God can use me. God uses the lowly things of this world to confound the wise. This generation, as scarred as they may be, will do mighty things for God. Why? Because God has said that, that the people that love Him can, can raise up and that will do greater works than even He did on this earth. And now is the time for the church and the body of Christ to stand up and, and to be renewed, to be quickened in our spirit. Amen? Selfishness. Selfishness, bitterness, resentment, worshiping idols, uh, 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 witchcraft. All of these things in our life just build a wall between us and God. And again, it's our decisions that we must tear down those walls and come into the relationship with Christ. When is that time ready? As soon as you're ready, God is ready. We don't know when we walk out here if we get ran over by a car, we get into a Lord forbid a protest or we die or we're shot however at that moment that something would happen in our life is done on this earth what will we uh, have to hang our hat out as we stand hang our hats on as we stand before God the devil knows that he's defeated why because Jesus defeated him and he is going to take down as many people he's using people idolat uh, idolatry and and um, uh, organizations and, and spirits across this land to see just how far he can go and what the people are going to do to reject him. And I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, we will stand up and we will serve the Lord. And I, I plead with you to do the same thing. 
check your heart. Resist the devil, for he must flee under those authority. A couple more things before I pray. I never intend to be long, but as I study, there's just so much. What are some of the results that lead to ruin as we have a spirit of rebellion? There are ways and consequences for, for us to be uh, rebellious against the Lord. Psalms 107. Listen to this. 107 verses 17 and 18 says this. There are ways, consequences, uh, are rebellious against the Lord. Psalms 107 verse 17 and 18 says this. Some were fools, they, were, they rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food and they were knocking at death's door. So just, just the scripture where we see the word, uh, the thought, and they were rebelled and they were suffering for their sin. You see, when you allow a spirit to lead you astray from God's plans and God's ways, you're going to have consequences to that. You're going to not have peace. You're going to live in fear. You're not going to have obedience. You're going to, diso you're going to disobey. You're going to doubt God's word. You're going to have selfishness, pride, lust, anger, fear. Those are the beasts that rage in the soul of the flesh to destroy us and to take us off track from God's will. So we need to recognize that and we need to pray against that because you will suffer in rebellion for your choices to allow a spirit to pull you away from the things of God. We don't want to do that. You see, when the Israelites uh, let fear prevent prevent them from uh, from fighting for Canaan, God judged, judged that generation and they allowed them to die off in the wilderness. Why is there death and suffering? Why does God allow these things? Because He loved you enough to give you a free will, but when we repetitively sin against God we become retrobates in our mind and even God can't change your mind and force your heart open he loves you he's waiting for you at every opportunity to 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 change your life and all of us have half-heartedly come to God at times and we gave him a fireproof insurance prayer oh God get me out of the situation I'll never do this again I want to serve you help me and as soon as he helps me the enemy comes out with the things and the cares of the world and we begin to just follow the ways of the world. Amen. We must put on the full armor of God and be soldiers. Of other accounts and different things, but King Saul paid a high price for his disobedience. Not, uh, not only did the spirit depart from him, that's the thing that I have is when we're walking in sin and rebellion and defiance to God is God's spirit is withdrawn. And now we're walking in the flesh in our carnality like animals in the jungle, devouring and thinking and doing whatever we can do to survive. That is not how God created us and intended us to live. Amen. That's exactly what happens. We get in self and we get lost. So when God's spirit was departed from him, he also became mentally disturbed. His mind was chaos and confusion. Our word, our minds need to be stayed. The, the word says we are to have the mind of Christ. When you meditate on the word of God, your thoughts become the same thoughts as God's. His ways are higher than our ways, but we can know him. We don't just say, well, God works in mysterious ways. No, God works in accordance to his word. And I can know those things. And if I pray and ask God, God will show me. I, I believe that God will show me. Consumed in jealousy and, and bitterness Saul spent his life chasing David. He wanted to find those things of God, but God's spirit had been withdrawn. At one time, Saul had an order from God, and he was operating, and he was leading the kingdom of God. You and I at one time may have been walking for God, but we've gotten away. We've fallen short. We've sinned. We're suffering in our sin. We have a rebellious spirit. We have a hard heart. You can repent. You can be forgiven, but you have to initiate that. You have to speak that. You have to believe that. And you have to be willing to back that up with God's help. Last thing I want to say is what happens to our life when we rebel against God? Immediately, fellowship with God is broken. Genuine happiness, peace, and joy 
will disappear from our lives. We need joy. We need fellowship. We were created with that. Isn't it funny how they're telling us not to touch anybody, to, to go to your house, don't speak to anybody. It's, it's just a spirit of division, a spirit of, of keeping God's children who have the power, who have the anointing to make a difference in this world, to isolate us. You can't isolate it, what God has called. God is raising up His church. God may even be judging His church. So be it. If He's judging it, it's because we need it. And after we are judged, if we'll listen to that judgment, we'll rise up in victory. He'll rise up in individual's life if you submit to God. So let's do that. You will, be, you will make foolish mistakes as a result. You will start to doubt the Father even really loves you. You'll begin to doubt that God's hand is on this country. God's country. God's family. God's community. God's church. God's fellowship. We fellowship with Him, but it says, Forsake not the assembly of the brethren. Let us spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Hebrews 10, 24. And lastly, your physical well-being may suffer. You harm yourself. You get in car wrecks. You get arrested. You scar yourself. You mark yourself. Calling out anything in the natural first became spiritual and has to go through the spiritual to get to the natural. Look at the disruption of our country. We need to not rebel against God. We need to submit to His authority, both country and individually. And God will restore us. Amen? Um, people tend to make unhealthy decisions when they are living in disobedience to Christ. We've all made wrong choices. For we have all fallen short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He loves you right where you're at. And I pray that any defying spirit, any familiar spirit, any bondage, any poverty that you may be experiencing in your life, God does not want that for you. That's not how God wants to leave you. But it is a process. It's a process of coming into His presence positioning myself in a relationship where he can break those bondages you and I left alone on our own devices can't I can't tell you how many times I tried to change myself in my rodeo career in my relationship with my family it was not good it was not until I fell in humility on my face and said God you help me then he brought my wife then he brought my family then he brought the gold buckle then he brought the ministry. And there's a divine order in my life today that I follow. And every day I get out of bed, I can make wrong choices too. And I have. But I'm quick to get back into the anointing of God on my life. So that he can use me. He wants to use you today. Let me leave you with this closing thought. You see, our choices are simple. Submit to the Father or rebel against him. That's the choice of this message. Rebellion leads to ruin. Obedience leads to blessing and victory. Either way, you will reap what you sow. See, the Bible says, Do not be deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that will he reap. Our nation is reaping what we've sowed. But we also know that we can instigate a revival. We can stand up for our faith. We can stand up, uh, do it the right way. Do it in prayer. Do it in all obedience. But remember, that obedience brings blessing and disobedience brings consequences. No one who, is, uh, who has rebelled against the Lord has true peace and joy or blessings or contentment or is successful in life. See, you can be successful in life and be without Christ, but your house is built on the sand and it can come down at any given moment. I want to be successful as God calls success. I know that I'm saved. I am been sifted for the service of God. My family is walking with God. My ministry preaches the undefiled word of God. Doesn't sugarcoat it. Lives it out. That's the way we need to have a, a holy indignational spirit of saying, you know what? I know that I know that I love God. And I know that God loves you. And lastly, they may look successful from the outside, but inwardly, they are not satisfied with their own life. 
wise men and women choose to obey God, but they leave the consequences to Him. Wise people choose Christ Jesus as their Lord. I don't know where you're at today, and I know that I've rambled on for 45 minutes talking to you about the things of God. The most powerful thing we'll ever have in our life, I don't care if you're a billionaire or a trillionaire, all the money in the world cannot change the human heart. All the, all the turmoil we've had in life, all the chaos in our world can only be changed spiritually. There is a unity. You see, when I meet a, 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 a black brother that I rodeoed with or a, a, a somebody that I traveled with because this is of a different skin color, what does that mean to me? It's not, it's not a skin color, it's a sin problem that we have. And I want to ask you to just look at our lives. We can't change the world until we look at our lives. Whatever's going on in the world out there, let's change ourselves and be part of the solution. Let's start to believe. Let's quit gossiping and watching the news so much. Let's look into the Word of God and allow God's Word to change our hearts. And I promise you as we do that, God will fight the battles. He'll take down every evil spirit that has ever come across this nation. Why? Because we are abiding as wise men and women under the shadow of His protection. And even if that happens, we will be with Him in eternity and glory. But I'm telling you, when we get to glory, we have to know how it operates there and how it operates here. Store up your treasures on heaven where rust, moth, and dust cannot destroy. You have a calling. You have a purpose. You have an identity. And God so loves you that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. Some of you have heard that a million times like I did. Some of you need to, to rededicate your life. Some of you need to ask Jesus into your heart right now for the first time. Either way, I pray and ask you to pray with me right now this simple sinner's prayer. If you pray this prayer from a, from a, from a, a sincere heart, I promise you that God is no respecter of a person. He will invade your life and you will find out his true blessing and what he has ordained for you to walk in and the love that he has for you so that you can quit suffering the consequences of your sin and the lack of his presence in your life when you think you have him. That's deception. That's religion. You can have him right now. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. Lord God, I have been rebellious against you. I've heard your message this morning that rebellion leads to ruins and separated from you. Jesus, I love you. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins and my past. Lord, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. For I confess you now as the Lord of my life. And I believe in my heart that you no longer live in that grave, but that you rose on the third day by God's Spirit. And that same Spirit can now fill my mortal body, that it is no longer I that live, but you that liveth in me. Thank you for all you've done and I will live for you all the days of my life help me to be on course with my destiny as you created me in Jesus name Amen thank you so much for tuning in if you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life or you might have even prayed that and rededicated your life because you were walking in rebellion separated and suffering will you let us know write to us you can go to all the websites westernharvestministries.com scottmendes.com we have teaching tapes things and resources we'd love to get to you thank you for partnering with us we look forward to coming and speaking with you whenever we can throughout the nation and until then we'll continue to come to you through these messages 
God loves you, and we love you, and we'll see you down the road. Thank you. Bye-bye.